spoke to me this week. One day I woke up and then just, you know, I was thinking about uh, preaching and also to tell the word of God. You know, it is the Father's Day, what I'm going to talk about. <clears throat> then I think the Holy Spirit prompted me to, my spirit immediately tell me about, according to, you know, what I came across, I came to know, I know that my birth father been with him for quite uh, more than 30 years together, you know. Then uh, I went out from Burma, and even now, the more I come to know is I come to know God the Father in my whole life, more and more in my life. So the first thing, today my topic is honor the fathers. And also the first father I want to honor is God the Father. And the second father I want to honor today is my birth or your birth father, you know, biological father, you can say that. And the third father is a spiritual father. I can't forget that one, okay? You can't omit that one as well. Very important in your life and in my life. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. As a Father's Day, Father, we all celebrate the Father's Day together. Every one of us, we have a father but a little bit different experience with our birth fathers. But today, as we come back to you, Father, we want to honor you first as our Heavenly Father. And as we want to honor our biological father, at the same time, we want to honor our spiritual father together, Father, as your children, as your word says, Father. Holy Spirit, I want to invite you to come and speak through me, Lord, and teach me. And also, whatever I'm going to speak, Father, I'm going to talk. Let it be your will, Lord, not my will. Let your will be done in this place. And all the principality, authority, power, darkness, and stronghold, I stop in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And I pray, Lord, your word will be penetrating into every single one's life, Father. Not just receiving the word and go to listen, but also, Father, like <sighs> to penetrate into our spirit and speak to us. Not just like a good picture, but just like life-changing, Father, words. To receive life-changing words, Father, today. Not by man, not by power, but by your spirit, Lord. Everything we give thanks to you, we commit all to your hands. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. Amen, amen. So by honoring the Father, the first one, you know, we have to honor our Heavenly Father. <clears throat> so when we talk about honor... There are something, you know, when you want to honor someone, you want to give something, you want to be beside him, you want to talk to him, you want to visit him, you want to spend time with him. So my first point, I want to honor the Heavenly Father, you know. The best thing that I want to honor the Heavenly Father is uh, when I look at the worship. Just now, Lapo was singing, you know, I honor you for who I am. And today, to worship God, to honor him with our worship. When I say that, you know, to honor God with my worship. Why it is important? Because you know, I know that, you know, in your life, in my life, one of the most higher call in your life is to worship God. And another highest call in your life is you are called to love, not called to hate, not called to criticize, not called to do anything. Just called to love. The first thing you are called to worship our God. Being said that, you know, we have to worship you, God. If you don't worship you, what's going to happen? Nothing happened. If you don't worship him, he's still on the throne. If you worship him, he's still on the throne. Whether you worship or not, he's still God and he's still big and he's still great and he's still wonderful in his own way. But one thing is, he wants you, he wants me to worship him because he wants to give you more of him in your life. Hallelujah. This is what worship is all about. Okay, when we talk about uh, to worship God. <clears throat> Why this worship is so important? Uh, as <clears throat> the worship that I'm going to say is, Lord, <clears throat> is um, yeah, yes, we know that we come here, we do a praise and worship, we, we start the music, we play the music, the music is nice, and uh, the, the vocal is very good, the songs are very beautiful, very smooth going, and we, we have a good worship. Sometimes we, we don't know the song. Sometimes uh, 
we don't we can't catch or we can't follow the song. Um, our worship is no, <laughs> not that good. But one thing is, I tell you, <clears throat> uh, worship is worshiping God, honoring God by worshiping Him. It's very important because He is worthy. Because He is uh, everything. You know, the worship begin with God and end with God. Amen. And God is the center of all things. And also the center of all things that exist. Above all the little gods and all the uh, everything. That is why he alone is the creator. He alone is uh, the, uh, the, like makes things uh, sustain. He is a sustainer. He is an uh, originator. He is a life giver. He is a beauty maker. And also he dwells in endless praises and endless worship. When you look at Revelation 4, verse 8, it says, Holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Never do this stop. So, one day, when we are out from this world, there is only one thing that we can do before God, before the throne. That is, not preaching. No praying, but just like this elderly people, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We worship you. We worship you. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, nonstop, forever and ever and ever. We're going to worship him. Okay. Being said about worship, we honor him. That's why we give him our worship. When we talk about worship, you know, we have to talk about true worship as well. Where the true worship come from? <clears throat> the true worship, uh, when I said true worship, is there any false worship in the Bible? Yes, there is. I, I tell you. In the book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 6 and 7, it says, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That's what Jesus said. Some people, they just come to honor him with their lips, but the heart is not there. But the worship that I'm going to, uh, I'm going to talk to you today is a true worship. You can see it in the book of John, chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. Verses 23 and 24. Okay. The book of John, chapter... <clears throat> Four, verses 23 and 24. It says like that. An hour is coming, and now is the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to be his worshiper. From the day of Adam until the day Jesus born, before Jesus was born, before Christ, I mean. In the Old Testament, people worship God, you know, with the offerings. They got the peace offering, love offering, grains offering, burnt offering, offerings, offering, offerings, offering. You have to bring offering to God to worship him. And also, they worship God in so many postures. It means they raise their hand, they clap their hand, they kneel down, they just lie down, they, you know, like... Everything. But Jesus spoke to the woman from Shuka at the well about worship is. You know, that's very interesting. When I, when I read about the book, you know, when I look at John chapter 3, someone came to Jesus. Do you know who is that? Nicodemus. He's a Pharisee. He knows the word of God. He, he knows the word of God. Everything. But Jesus didn't talk to him about worship. Jesus said, you've got to be born again. But the, 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 the woman, you know, six husband, five husband, uh, staying with the five husband already. The sixth one also not got married. Staying with the sixth husband. And then talk to Jesus. The first thing they talk about, water. And also Jesus said, I'm the living water. Whosoever drink me never thirst again. And then slowly Jesus changed the subject to the worship. 
One day, there will be a day, there will be a time coming. Nobody can go to the mountain, have to go to the mountain, go to the Jerusalem. They can worship and in spirit and in truth. And Jesus said, now is the time coming, and it's coming. The woman did not understand. But one thing is, according to the Bible, when Jesus said, now, it's been there is someone who worshiped God in spirit and in truth. That is Jesus. He's the only person who know God, the Father God, worship in spirit and truth. And he said, now is the time. And also the time is coming. Uh, if you have uh, a picture of Tabernacle, you, you can show me. <clears throat> so uh, this is uh, the picture that you know, changed my whole life. You know? And I want to uh, give it to you as well. And we didn't discuss with each other this morning. And in fact, I was talking about worship, you know, connect to God. This is like a not coincidence today, what God wants us to speak to all of you, this, this subject. And I said, in the tabernacle, you will see that, you know, outer court. Rabbi Abdi, what is that? Outer court. In a holy place. Holy of holies. Or the most holiest place. Outer court. Holy place. Holy of Holies. Okay. So you, when you look at the outer court, it's been like the compound. You can see. People can see. People, whatever you do, people can see that. And also, there are two hiding rooms in the tabernacle. The first room called Holy Place. The second room called Holy of Holies. In between Holy Place and Holy of Holies, there is the very thick veil, you know, the curtain, they call the curtain in between there. What does it mean? It means no one can go to the Father God. No one can go to meet the Father God because there is a thick veil. Once a year, only the high priest can go for the, with the sacrifice, you know, the family gave. So that's what happened in the Old Testament. Only once a year they can enter, not the, only the high priest can enter. Which means not everybody can go to the presence of God easily. And when we look at your life, my life, what do you have in your life? As a human being, you have a body. And you have a soul. You have a spirit. Body, everyone can see you. Whatever you do, sometimes you smile, but inside not smiling. Also, no one knows that. Your body. And also, the other part is your soul. And the other part is your spirit. Your spirit and your soul being together. And the meaning of tabernacle is doing what? Tabernacle is simply means that. Dwelling place. And also, the picture of the man also, like we are like a tabernacle, you know. We are like a tabernacle. We have a body, we have a soul, we have a spirit. I'll tell you what happened is like, when Jesus, Jesus spoke to that woman that there will be a day come, no one has to go to the mountain or go to Jerusalem they can worship God in spirit and in truth. Then the day came. Jesus Christ had to die on the cross. You know, we all know that the seven, you know, statement or the seven uh, big words Jesus spoke on the cross. After that, before the last was, uh, no, uh, yeah, yeah, the last was, before the last was, I think. When Jesus said, it is finished, whatever, the curtain from the temple, the veil from the temple rendered or tearing down from top to the bottom. You know what? What does it mean? In Hebrew, it says, Jesus Christ himself inaugurated. He made a way for all of us to enter to God's presence straight away from that time onward. You know, people can enter to God's presence. It is in the tabernacle. 
It is at the temple. It is in the, in like, um, in the Old Testament. But here, we have a body, spirit, and soul. Jesus said, the day will come. When? When the day of Pentecost, the day of Pentecost, Jesus asked the disciples to go and wait at Jerusalem. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven. And after the, the way was rendered, the, the way from the temple was tearing down, that you know people can get into God's presence. And also the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down. And during that time, you have body, you have soul, you have spirit. But in between, the veil between your soul and your spirit being rendered, being tearing down. And at that time, the spirit come from heaven, the Pentecostal spirit can enter into your spirit. God's spirit and your spirit become one. During that time, you can worship in spirit and in truth. I don't know whether you make sense or not. This is a very beautiful picture. Not just a beautiful picture. This is what changing my whole life to worship God. Changing my whole being to honor my God the Father with my worship, with my praise, with my life, with my everything, with my entire being. Now I know. So, this is what we worship. This is what I honor God. This is what we're going to honor God. Give him your worship. Now you know. You can worship God in spirit and in truth. Everywhere you are. Wherever you are. Whatever you do. When you are driving. That's why, you know, um, when I was in the Bible college, I have to study about what they call samadhi. Samadhi means like some and also the worship. The praise and worship. We learn after six months, you know, we have three questions to answer. The very first question, they said, where does worship begin? The second one is, where is the tabernacle now? The third one is, what is the center of your worship? <clears throat> because there was a assignment, you know, how to write. <clears throat> where is the tabernacle now? Tabernacle, you know, tabernacle step as Moses tabernacle, who is tabernacle, and then come to the last tabernacle was David tabernacle, you know, at Mount Zion, you know, at Mount Zion, in the David's Tabernacle, they have four music team, you know? The whole week, the whole night, the whole day, the whole year, 40 years, nonstop, worship, worship, praising, playing music, singing, and dancing inside the Tabernacle. That's called David Tabernacle. That's why God said, I am going to rebuild the Tabernacle of David. But God loves the Tabernacle of David, you know? But one thing is, since Jesus came, the dwelling place came, he came to dwell in the world. He came to dwell in the midst of us. And that dwelling place, that tabernacle, where is now the tabernacle? Do you know? How many of you know that? Tell me. Where is the tabernacle now? Where? ABCF? Hope Church? City Church? Hates on Church? No! Tabernacle is where? Here! Thank you. <laughs> now the tabernacle is in you. So where worship begin? Worship is a verb, you know. <laughs> That's why I said there is a wrong worship and there is a right worship. Worship begin from the heart. Some, That's why, you know, sometimes you don't want to clap. I went and said, yo, we're going to clap for God. And someone look at me. Some people. I said... Without your heart, don't do that. <laughs> if there is from your heart, do it. <laughs> we need to be very sincere and honest, you know, because everything is from the heart. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart, for it is a wellspring of life. Christian life, believer's life, your life, my life, the most important thing is your heart. This worship starts from your heart. When you give God, you give from your heart. Not just your hand, not just your head, not just your mouth, your lips, I mean, your heart. I think my John did remember. <clears throat> we went to, he was on so many years, no? we went to, <laughs> you know, sometimes we have to queue up a long way, sometimes under the rain, we, we're so crazy to work, 
to, to get into prison with him. You know, many, with the young people, the youth, we went year after year after, because Paul Gloria was little, we went, and uh, I don't know why we left it. We went. But one day, you know, we, we went there. I think Louis Giglio said, you know, I heard that people said, we're going to begin prison with you. We're going to begin prison with you. He said, since you entered the door, you have already started your praise and worship. No, no, not at all. I don't understand. I did not understand. The, all the way long, I have to come back from the play. Let's talk about, well, what does he mean? He said, you have already been worshipped since you entered to the door, not a door. Because, you know, in the Hillsong Conference, when you get there, 175 doors, you know. One door, two doors, three doors. Uh, in the downstairs, like 22 doors, and the upstairs, 70 doors, and also 125 doors. Many people enter a door, a door, a door, one door, two door, one, 125, all gathered together, about 40,000 people, or 20, you know, like 25 or 30,000, 40,000 people together over there. But he said, worship already been started when, since you enter the door. You know who is the door? Yeah, Jesus Christ is the door. Unless you enter to the door, there is no worship. So today, this is the first point. To honor God the Father, give all of your worship. <clears throat> give him your all, give him your heart. <clears throat> this is the first point. And the second part, <clears throat> I have um, a story for a little, 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 little one as well today. I know that, you know, the, the, the crowd is different. You know? We've got young adults, we've got little one, we've got Sunday school here. <clears throat> the second one, honor your birth father. We're going to read this word together uh, from the book of, <clears throat> we're going to read Exodus 20, 12. <clears throat> Within 10 commandments, the very first commandment for a human being. Yep. <clears throat> uh, all the commandments for all of us, you know, but this one is that belong to, belong to us. <clears throat> Shall we read together? One, two, three. Honor your father and mother, then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God has given you. Easy, you know, the word says, honor your father and your mother so that you may live the blessing is long for life in the land you, the God is giving you. I tell you, <clears throat> I found out something. No? <clears throat> it is very, very easy to obey or listen to the parents. You know, when your, your mom or your dad told, is tell you that, son, daughter, could you please eat this ice cream? What are you going to say? Yes, mom. Could you please finish um, this donut? <laughs> oh, yes, mom. Yes, Dad. But one thing is like, sometimes when you are playing outside, maybe you're playing soccer, you're playing cricket, you're playing something, you know, like when Mommy said or Daddy said, Son, Dora, could you please come back and help me because I have to carry something. Ah! Ah! Yeah, that's why many authors say, you know, the most difficult commitment to honor, uh, to, to, to follow is that this, I mean, this um, commandment. At the same time, in Ephesians 6, verse 1, St. Paul said, said again, you know, honor your parents, honor your father and mother, for it is a will of God. When I said that, you know, I want to tell you something. Jesus Christ himself being with his parents, I'm going to say first his parents, Mary and Joseph, for 30 years under the authority, honoring the parents. Jesus was born as a little boy and growing up as a boy and growing up as a young man, helping the father and also growing up as a young adult and also adult. Do you know why? Because the, uh, uh, the commentary said, because Jesus said, the example for all of us. That's why we say, Jesus has set the example. We say, give up your best to the master on, in that song. We, we, we sing that one. So Jesus wanted to set the example for all of us. <clears throat> he obeyed the parents until the day, you know, 
He had to go out for the ministry. He was obeying the parents, listen to the parents. When uh, the parents say no, he, uh, he had to accept it. When the parents say yes, he accepted. And I tell you one story for a little one today. I, I bring the story. You know, this story is very, um, I want to say a very interesting story. <clears throat> about the mice family. Have you, how many of you heard about the mice family? Mice. Like the rat, you know, mice are red, red. Little rats, family, they lived under the tree. One day, daddy said, don't go next door because next door is very dangerous. There is a man living there with a mustache and also he got a mouse trap. And uh, among them, you know, there was a little rat, little one, you know. You know, Sasu, you know what, inquisitive, want to know. I want to go observe. Why did he see that? Why did he see that? I want to, I want to, I want to. When others say, you know, we don't go, we don't go, he said, no, I don't care. What, whatever that is, I'm going to go. You know what? When he went, <clears throat> the first thing, he saw that the door opened. And also he saw that a man w w with a gray hair, no, not like said, with a gray hair, smiling at him. And then he saw the man smiling at him, and then he came back. He said, Daddy! I saw the man smiling at me, very kind, looking very kind, very good. And they said, that's very dangerous. Don't go there again. And other siblings said, we don't go. And they said, I don't care. He went again. <clears throat> you know what? When he went, <clears throat> after a big door opened, he saw a little house there. <laughs> Not only a little house. In, in, inside the little house, you know, uh, there is a food there. He thought, oh, this man smiled at me. He is very kind. He just made a little house for me. Inside, he put apple. He put food I am going to enjoy. You know what? He entered into the little house. You know, the little house is a mousetrap. <laughs> then as soon as he entered, what happened? The door shut. <laughs> oh, <sighs> I can't think of this man. Even though when I eat the food, I have to eat Privately, he shut the door for me. <laughs> he, he was so thankful to the little rat, so thankful to the, the, the man, you know. And then <laughs> when the time came, he came back <clears throat> after he ate, you know, whatever. The man came and grabbed the little house and <laughs> look at that. Again, he said, Oh, this man, so, this man is so kind. Not only let me eat privately, but also he wants to show me around his house. <laughs> and I carry him and he'll go around the house and you know, whatever. And then the man put him into the water. Whatever. When he caught up in the water, slowly, slowly, the little house, you know, drawn into the water and the little rest couldn't breathe, and he died there. So the little one, today the lesson is, when dad said, don't go, you have to know that. Dad is more experienced than you. Dad loves you. Dad pray for you. Dad do everything for you. Today I heard a lot about many young people. The little one said, my dad's working very hard. And they, 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 look, they, they, they find money for me, to, for us to get a good clerk. You know? Dad knows that. That's why when daddy say, don't do that. When daddy say, don't go with, don't go that track, you don't go there. When daddy say, don't go there, you don't, go, you don't do that. Okay? Lesson. And I want to tell you, but <laughs> I don't want to tell to <clears throat> this little one, you know, but one thing I tell you, all the young <laughs> This morning I've already mentioned in the morning service some. <clears throat> Uh, there an article I was reading. Uh, it is with me here. The inner city mission, you know, project, teaching Sunday school. They said something in there in the article. They said, you know, when you get to the city, when you talk about, you know, God is like a father. Many young people they don't come anymore. <laughs> they don't know what happened. Later on, they found out that in many young minds, you know, they got a, a negative image of their father. When you said God is looking like your father, what they know, they knew us, huh? This, <laughs> they knew, when you talk about the father, you say, the man who beats me, the man who beats my mother, the man 
who, what do you call it? Who abandoned our family? Who, the man who left home? The man who abusive to my sister? No? The terrible, the horrible man. They, they knew only that. So the, the, what they have to do is like they have to tell young little one that God is like your best friend. The book of John 15, 15 says, I'm not going to call you uh, um, my slave, and I call you friends. So they have to introduce God as a friend first. Then slowly they have to increase in the the at God's attribute about he's been a father, he's been a creator, he's been everything in your life, whatever you need. He's the father to the fatherless. So today I want to... <clears throat> In this, in this point, I want to, you know, challenge everyone. So what about you? What about me? What is your experience? But one thing is, just now I told you, the first thing, when you know how to honor God the Father, when you know, when you accept Jesus <clears throat> coming to your life, he will empower you, the Spirit will empower you, the Spirit will fill you with his love. Then you can be able to love, you can be able to forgive, you can be able to do whatever according to what the Spirit do. Amen? So today, honor your birth father. I'm not going to tell you about the, the birth. Uh, but I got plenty of story, you know, like kind of dries my heart, but I'm not going to tell you here. But the last thing I want to encourage you with, the word of God here. <coughs> uh, show, the, the first one we're going to read, First Thessalonians 5, 12 to 13. First Thessalonians 5, 12 to 13, <coughs> and Hebrews 13, 17. <coughs> the first word is, shall we read together? Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. Another verse, Hebrews 13 to 17. Hebrews 13 and 17. <clears throat> Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be a no benefit to you. You know Einstein? You know Einstein? Einstein says something like that. If you stand up and look further, and if you know that you can see further than any other people, don't ever forget that you are standing on one's shoulders. Maybe your parents, maybe your, pa your teacher, your pastor, you something. Don't ever forget that. When you are in one position, you are standing on someone's shoulders. You know, you, me, your life, my life, without building up, without, you know, someone's built your life, without someone built my life, you won't be there, I won't be here to be in this position, to be in this kind of, you know, to be preaching like that. So it is all about understanding and all about submit, you know, submission. And I tell you, when I talk about submission, it is very difficult to people to submit to others. Even at home, you know, husband and wife, hard, difficult to submit to each other. At home, kids and parents, hard to, you know, kids hard to, difficult to submit to each other. But one thing is, as I told you, the first one, when you know to honor God, when you know, when you are free with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit will show you what is right and what is wrong. And also, you will come to know how to love your parents, how to forgive. And I know that some, some, some young people, they came across, when I was in youth mission, um, um, I, I tell you, uh, I remember one thing. When I was in youth mission, you know, I was 32 years old, and my leader is 23 years old. Every time, I want to argue with him a lot, but I submit, I didn't say anything. But what, what, what happened, you know, that I end up, he, he came to teach me English. At the same time, he taught me. He said, when you go in front, when you start preaching, don't ever afraid. Because when you stand, the Holy Spirit <laughs> occupy you and he's going to speak through you, not you. Oh my gosh, I learned that. I thought I have to do something. But no, he, he taught me, he taught me. I submit. 
he's, he was 23. Now I think he's in China being a big missionary. And I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. And I remember. So in your life, whether young or old, here we have a leaders. You know, they said, don't let your leader to be getting a burden. Have you ever done that before? Have you, you know, are you, you think that you're going to do that before? Stop it. <laughs> this is what, from my heart, you know, I, I just want to impart to you. In my life also, <laughs> being submitted under authority for quite, <laughs> how many years? You know what I want to say is that, the more you exercise submission, the more your anointing increasing. Some people, they don't learn to submit. They want to exercise authority only, but it doesn't last long. If you are the one who know how to submit under the leaders, how, know how to submit under the anointing, your anointing will be increasing sometimes much more. Oh, this is what I learned. Not from the book. This is from my life. So I want to encourage you. Oh, the last verse I'm going to read, <coughs> nearly 2.30, to, to uh, tell you about. Here it said, 1 Corinthians 4.15, it says, For even if you had 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. For I became your father in Christ. Jesus, in Christ Jesus, when I preached the good news to you, who talked about this one? St. Paul. You know, when you look at St. Paul, uh, young Timothy, the mothers, the grandmother, they are a good a Christian, but the fathers, not a Christian. But when you look at the relationship between Paul and Timothy, you can see that like a father and son, you know, relationship. They got a really true, uh, what do you call that, submitting relationship in between Paul and Timothy. Timothy submitted to his spiritual father, Paul. So today, the first thing, we are going to honor God the Father. What are we going to give? We're going to give all of our worship, all of our time, all of our things, all of our hearts. Sometimes you think that if I give all of my heart to God, I'm going to be gone. I want to be there. No, no. It says, the more you give, he never destroys. He wants to give you more. It's called relinquish. You, when you relinquish, you know, you know when, whatever we give to God, nothing, nothing from me. What, everything from him. Whatever I receive from him, I just give back to him. That's all. So honor your God the Father with your worship. Honor your Father with your listening obedience. And honor your spiritual leader with your submission. This is the three points that you will remember your whole life. If you live that life, you're going to become a very powerful, wonderful, anointed leader later. As Sir Jeffrey is uh, aiming on, uh, he, said, he, he saw many young generation will be rising up as a leaders to lead the church, to lead the congregation, to lead the believers, and to lead the country, to lead the world. We are world changer. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. So what are we going to do now? Finish. I'm going to say, this is my desire. <laughs> so all right, I'm going to say, this is my desire. Then I want uh, some charity to come and pray for all these English service people. <coughs> This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you.
just want to thank you so much for this timely message, Father God. Father, whatever we heard from this uh, beautiful, powerful message, Father, Father, we will follow your word and we'll always be have a time of, a life of worship, Father God. Father, thank you so much for uh, today's message and we just want to thank you for all the fathers who are really hardworking for our family for, for our children and then the, for the, for the uh, uh, kingdom of God, Father God. Bless all the fathers who are coming today and in, at home. Bless them abundantly. And then bless the word of, word of God too. Whoever hear this word, Father, they will never ever forget. Always remember and always uh, put in their hearts, in their mind and always follow your ways, Father. Thank you so much for that, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, Father God. 